Dig in Japan, where the eastern sea is so blue. Look, let's just get down to it. I've got another MSX. It wasn't my intention. In fact, this one's pushed its way ahead of the queue because there's another one as well. But this is a Panasonic FS-A1. And you'll notice the Japanese text on the box because it's a Japanese MSX that has recently come into my possession. Something I'd never thought I'd own. Uh, regular Chinivision viewer and Patreon supporter Johnny Blanchard was selling some of his collection and he's been importing stuff from Japan over the years. And I just approached him and said, look, um, before this stuff goes on eBay or wherever, if you've got anything that might be of interest to me, can I buy it? And, and he had this. In fact, he had two of these. So I drove to his house, uh, picked it up, and, and here we are. Um, with something I never thought I'd owned, because when you're importing stuff from Japan, as you may know, it's complex, it's expensive. You'll be paying potentially import duty, VAT, handling charges, having to go on Yahoo auctions out there and do all that stuff. And what can be, what, what can seem like a reasonably priced computer when you buy it on the Japanese auction site suddenly doubles or trebles in cost by the time it's got to the UK. So. Yeah, I'm really excited to have this. And it's got the box, as you can see. Um, and not a lot on the box. It's just this really just it. You get some specs on the side there. Interestingly, RAM 64K, VRAM 128K, because it's an MSX2. So I don't know what Panasonic were quite thinking there. But, um, and I did know, because I was told what this character on the front, who he is. But I don't remember. So that'll probably get some people wound up because I perhaps should know. But really, it's not the box that interests me here. It's the computer. And I'm going to very delicately get it out of this. And um, uh, we'll have a look. So here we are. And wow, it's uh, very Japanese looking, isn't it? All all slick with the characters on there. Um, all very high tech. As I mentioned, it is an MSX2, so it's the second of the MSX standards, the newer one. Uh, and that means it's got more colors, basically the same sound chip, but it's got better graphics and can run. There's not so many titles available for it, but uh, we've covered the MSX2 before on Trini Vision, my Sony uh, hit bit. So go and look at that video if you haven't seen that one. But we're looking at this machine here, uh, which is a Panasonic FSA1. And it's got this little flap on the top because it's got two cartridge ports, as you'd expect. Uh, nice, or you don't see many computers with orange uh, writing on the keys or the box, do you? So it's something quite, quite different. It has a pause button, which freezes the entire system whenever you press it. Um, not just like a pause button in a game, but actually it, it locks the system up. Whatever you're doing, whatever game, it will pause it and then press on pause again and it, it all starts up again. That can be in basic, that can be in a cartridge, that can be anywhere. Um, it does have, uh, you know, uh, Latin characters on the front there. Um, is that the right word? Western, let's say Western characters on the front. It has the Japanese ones as well. You turn it on, you start typing, it's actually all in Western uh, characters. So that's absolutely fine. Um, LED up there to tell you it's turned on or off. Um, Go around the back, and you can see in there, you've got the standard MSX connectors you expect on an MSX2. That's a, the RGB there is uh, the standard one for the MSX2, so I've used my existing lead. No SCART, um, you do have composite out and a audio out there, RF out, which is gonna be NTSC and tuned to the Japanese TV system, so uh, don't expect to be able to use that. Um, the printer port there, and that is the printer port, isn't it? Yes, and I think that's tape there, but I've got a feeling it's different. I mean, oddly enough, it's the same pin connections as that one there, so you could actually plug your RGB into that one or your tape into that one. Um, yeah, and power supply there, which is a funny uh, three pin affair. We'll come to that because you're already thinking Ginny has a gotcha with this, aren't you? Isn't there? And uh, yeah. On the bottom, um, not much to see, but there is this battery compartment there. 
because it has uh, built-in utilities that need a battery backup. Uh, end loop batteries are apparently the ones to use rechargeables, they say, because they don't leak. Um, if you want to have your batteries, you don't need them. Um, I need to get that. And I mean, that's about all she wrote, really, because there's not a lot to see. It's two joystick ports on the side, as you say, you would expect. It's a MSX, so it's built to the standard. And yeah, I mean, not, not uh, common to see one of these in the UK. Um, although I did see two in one place at Johnny's house. But uh, yeah, um, so you're probably thinking to yourself, right, well, Chini, the gotcha here is obviously the power supply. And you would be right, because you have this um, brick thing here, which has the Japanese uh, two-prong connector on there. But of course, worse, it is 100 volts. Did I say it was 110 volts? 100, 100 volt power supply. If I get that in for you into focus there, you can see. Um, and it has this strange three pin connector, if you can see that there, that plugs into the MSX. So it's not a case if you can just go and buy a power supply from RS or someone, because you ain't going to get one, because this thing here outputs a standard nine volt DC, fair enough, and then 18 volts AC. So it's one of those ones, it's a dual you know, dual output supply into a peculiar plug on the end, which of course means you're lumbered with this original power supply um, until such time as you can rig up something um, newer, shall we say. Now, of course, you can go on eBay or Amazon and buy a step-down transformer to get your yeah, 240 volts in the UK, 230 volts down to the 100 volts. And they're not expensive, but I just think those cheap ones are liable to blow up on you. So I went to a supplier online, um, based in the UK. So I bought this and it's a hefty thing. Um, it takes a 230, 240 volts in and outputs it as a hundred volts. It can't convert the frequency, but that doesn't matter. So it will be outputting at 50 Hertz. But uh, of course, Japan is dual 50, 60 Hertz, isn't it? Because uh, half of Japan is 50 Hertz and the other half is 60 Hertz and therefore everything in Japan works on 50 or 60 hertz. And indeed, when I get that power supply there, 50 or 60 hertz, that's fine. So you've got your power supply there, you plug it in, and you end up with this unholy <laughs> thing hanging off the wall like that. And you can do it like, oh, that. But that's going to be even worse, isn't it? I mean, just imagine your wall socket under the weight of this. Um, you're best off putting it on an extension on the floor and letting it the weight just rest down on it. It ain't great, but um, it, it, it's it's okay. It's been working fine for me. Um, yeah, uh, but you could, it's something you're going to have to do. And I, if you're going to import lots of Japanese machines, I don't intend to. This is the only thing I'm going to have because it was in the UK. You need to make sure whichever adapter you buy, it can deal with the amount of current draw the computer is going to take. The people who sold me this, I was asking them about current draw. And they said, oh no, this one's not gonna be big enough for a computer. I said, no, it's a 1980s computer. It's not um, like a modern PC. It's not gonna be drawing many, many watts charging a battery or something. What's the new Apple Mac power supplies? Oh, they're over hundred watts, aren't they? 140? Um, no, uh, this, is, this one's fine for an MSX. Um, it's got a maximum load of 50 VA. I think this works out about 35, 40, something like that, something like that. But yeah, that, that's something you're going to need. There's no way around that. And if you are importing from Japan, and I'm not gonna go into details about how to do that, there's people who do that properly. I'm not experiencing it, but order your transformer in good time. But just look at this, just look at it. This is why you want a Japanese MSX. Even this isn't, isn't the you know, the best looking one. There's some Sony hit bits in red. There's a red version of this. Um, but even so, um, it, it's an exotic thing. It looks like nothing else with this um, orange text on it. The keyboard feels, I mean, it's barely been used. There's no marks or anything aware on the keyboard. Um, it, it's so nice. It, it, it's just different. And that's why people say MSX machines aren't very exciting, but they are 
because you get this and it just you have this on your shelf on display you go look at it look at it it's gorgeous with all its bits and i keep in mind of course the games will run if you're running your british games they will run faster because it's 60 hertz so it will be putting out a 60 hertz video signal that's not a problem for modern displays you won't even notice but if you're playing your game copy of feud or something uh, coded in the UK, coded to work at 50 hertz, then it will run faster. And indeed, some games may not function properly. A small proportion may not function properly. Same way, some 60 hertz C64 games don't work in, in the UK. Um, but yeah, let's look at it. Let's have a look inside and see what, what magic Panasonic um, has put in there for us. Right, so prepare for me to go off mic as I get this thing open. suspect it never has been opened I suspect what we'll find is inside is not a lot because I reckon by the time this machine came out oh, all these manufacturers would have got this, these things costed down and integrated into as fewer chips as possible uh, UK retail price um, well sorry let's, let's rephrase that shall we best I can find the equivalent this would have been new in pounds would be about £400 in Japan, the equivalent of £400. But obviously, this wasn't available in the UK. There was a variant available in Italy, though. Because, um, of course, some European countries, the MSX did quite well. But this this particular machine, I mean, MSX2s in general in the UK, um, this not not a thing. I mean, the MSX1s are, you know, not not common for many models. In fact, I've got another. I've got another MSX, an MSX one that I've had for a couple of years, but didn't work and went away to be repaired, and has come back. And that um, is another one where, well, it clearly wasn't purchased in the UK. I think it's a, a Dutch or German model, um, but it ended up in the UK, broken, and it's been repaired. And I'm going to be looking at that on Chinivision sometime soon. You guys are going to be so sick of me doing MSX videos. But, I mean, come on, it's more interesting than the Commodore 64, isn't it? This stuff, it's its like, you've seen C64s every day since 1983, probably, some of you. Um, it's a... It's like having some exotic Japanese car instead of, a, I don't know, an Austin Allegro or something, or a Ford Escort. So yeah, Ford Escorts are cool, but um, we always used to see them when we were kids. They were everywhere, and um, I would like to see that, that flashy Mazda, or, or whoever. Right, what have I not done here? It has clips, and I just need to pop them. I can without breaking them, the blooming thing. Come on, come on, yeah, hey. And we're in. Right, so what we got? What has anyone been in here since 1980, whatever it was made? I don't even know what year this was, actually. Probably on the MSX website. We probably should have looked at that, but we're going to find out in a minute. Look, we've got some Japanese fluff there. Um, right, okay. Whoa. 1986. I don't really... Look how... Wow! Wow. There's nothing in here. Nothing. God, that feels so... i tell you what that feels like. An Amstrad keyboard membrane. Not the feeling on the top, but once you start handling it, it's exactly... And that is really... It's probably the same manufacturers, isn't it? That really feels like a CPC... Um, kind of keyboard mech there. There's nothing in here. Apologies for any noise in the background. The fridge has just come on. Look at this. I mean, there is nothing in here. Nothing at all. Wow. What what date codes we got? We got a week 27, 1986 Z80 there. Got some little daughter board there. Something or other. And uh, by the way, the power switch is up on the left-hand side there. 
and it's it's clicky it's a nice clicky one not like the cheap ones sony went to after their first msx machines the smell of coming out of this is quite something some um, very metallic -y, um uh, smell i can't quite very sharp um you, you get smells out of computers as you know um this one smells quite quite different there's nothing in here nothing at all all the video stuff, uh, the, the AV kind of side and the power, initial power handling is underneath this massive heatsink at the back. Uh, it probably also gives some kind of screening uh, in there. I can't quite see what's underneath there. There's, well, there's quite a lot of All the resistors and capacitors, the kind of the large number, are underneath there. Um, we've got the Z80, as I say. That's going to be an I.O. chip there. Oh, it's OK. Uh, MEI, but I'm guessing that's an input output chip there and there's your msx2 chip which is doing practically everything and look how big it is how many pins it got has that got 64 pins on it there that msx2 chip and that's doing everything can i get you in there that's probably the best i can do i can't really tilt this round too much for you if you can see down there i don't know if you can see that but i mean it's massive that chip it's doing everything all the graphics, the sound, everything is within that chip. And that's how they can basically get the components down so low on this board because there's nothing in here. Is there stuff on the other side saying there's a gate array, the other is that gate array marking there? Again, sorry you're quite wonky there because I don't want to move this keyboard membrane. I don't want to start you really don't want to start unplugging and plugging these keyboard membranes. So I'm just trying to keep it plugged in while I do this. There's markings there for gate array and something else there. Are they underneath? Seems unlikely. It would seem very unlikely. We've got jumpers that go underneath there. And it's this lack of coating on here that's kind of quite slightly strange, isn't it? You don't... The other... Most computers sold in Europe will have the conformal coating over there and you'll see all the tracks on there and it'd be you know, two sides on the board. And, and this only has one side and no coating on here. To, it's a cost down thing. It's to keep it as cheap as possible. And that's how you kind of make these things. And it's the, their experience in making things like video recorders where you see these kind of brown, uncoated boards. And, and back, backs of TVs as well. Some of the TVs, when you go in there, they won't have the coating on them. It's, it's just about being as cheap as possible. I saw it's a big filtering cap up there. I'm not sure what this little daughter board up here does. It's marked hybrid, H-I-B-R-I-D. Um, but if you look at it, um, it's got lots of little SMD components on there. Not through hole. There's all these little um, resistors and things on there. I don't, I don't know what that does. I'm going to see if I can find out. I've got a schematic, but it's all in Japanese. That's the problem. Uh, there's the main system RAM, 16K chips um says 64k four times uh 16k chips and they've got your video memory there and they are 64k ram chips um, why on earth this thing doesn't have 64 uh, 128k of ram um system kind of memory i have no idea i find it hugely entertaining to um find out there's a system that has twice as much video ram as it does for <laughs> system ram that's the kind of thing the bitcoin miners would do here's my computer it's got twice as much um video memory as it does a system ram incidentally I, although i said earlier it's sold in italy it was branded toshiba in italy as a toshiba model that is essentially this this panasonic before we look at some of the footage from the machine and some of the games i am in the studio now so uh and I have the windows open because it's 33 degrees up here today, and I'm going to roast without some air coming through here. But um, I haven't talked about too much about the MSX2 standard in this video because we've kind of covered it before on Chinivision. But basically, over the MSX1s, you get more colours. You get a palette of 512, and some of the screen modes allow up to 256 colours, although that's in rather limited circumstances. You have the same sound ability, but you do have all that extra video RAM. Um, usually 128k, although some MSX2s, I believe, have 64k of video RAM. And pretty much all 
MSX2 software came on disc or cartridge. Uh, not that European thing of having games on cassette, although, as we've seen, there's still a cassette interface for backwards compatibility with MSX1 software. And there's no reason why you can't run MSX2 features off of the cassette software, but not all. And of course, because I've opened the window, someone's using uh, motorized garden tools somewhere down the road. So sorry about that. Just one thing to keep in mind before you see the footage from the machine, um, due to the way the Chini Vision is shot, um, the frame rates might slightly mismatch. So there could be a little bit of jerkiness or, or perhaps blurring in some of this footage. I'm going to call that out now. Might not be a problem, but I'm just going to say it. So this is what happened when you fire up this Panasonic A1. You get this interface, and you can probably guess from the icons what it is. It's a diary and tools thing. Um, I've seen other MSX2s. In fact, my HitBit has this. Things like uh, a clock with world time on it, and starting from 12 a.m. because I haven't put the batteries in this and set it up properly. Got a stopwatch for reasons best known to Panasonic. What you'd be using this for, I don't know. It's a rather bizarre set of tools, really. You think, what, why? And why do you force the system into this before basic? I don't know what this is. It involves hitting things with a hammer and cars and stuff. I've tried using my Google Translate app on the phone to translate what's going on here. I, I'm, I'm really not any more sure after having done that. I'll put a screenshot on the screen of what it showed me. Some kind of calendar app. Again, this is something that my HitBit has. They seem to think that you're going to use these computers and turn them on and just use them for this. But it's all rather lame. I mean, why do you need a calculator when you could just have a, a basic calculator? It's 1987. They're cheap and common by now. Not even any scientific function, so you're not giving any, any extra functionality. And some kind of memo pad. And all this will be kept if you've got the two batteries in the system. Everything will be retained. And then if, if you press F8, or you have to press Shift and F2, you end up in BASIC. Which means you've got to go, you've got to basically start the machine up twice every time you want to go in and use a cassette. But let's put a cartridge in, and my go-to cartridge is always F1 Spirit, so here we go. Doesn't take advantage of the MSX2's hardware features, but Interesting to see how this runs on an NTSC machine, because I've only ever played it in PAL. And this is where I discovered a problem. My joystick ports have dry joints on them and don't work. <laughs> oh dear. Um, yes, yeah, so that's going to be off of a pair. Uh, Fantasy Zone 2 is an MSX2 game here. And look at this, it's lovely. And because it's a Japanese game, this is the speed it should be running at, as opposed to the slow down you get when you run it in PAL. And Akari Warrior is a particularly good port. But it seems to go wrong. The first time it plays a sample, the music freezes. I don't know if that's because of the lack of memory in this MSX, whether it requires 128K. Now I'll try this game I've tried to play before. Um, haven't had too much success. It doesn't work too well off the flashcards. Um, it pauses occasionally to load things in, but no, here we are. It's running well. That has to be said, not the best version of Outrun. Very flickery, but it does have the music. And it's a version of the game you may not have seen. Hey, it's better than the UK home versions. Or the MSX1 version, oh dear me. And if the game isn't too good, well, at least some of the static screens look amazing. Nemesis 3, which I'm imagining would have an extra sound chip in the cartridge. So the sound is going to be wrong. It sounds like, yeah, um, some MSX games have an enhanced sound chip in the cartridge. And the AY just uses extra channels, and you can hear here. It's just running as the background uh, bits of the music. But what happens if you want to run your ropey old Spectrum conversions? Well, you can plug in your cassette tape. And here we go. This is Swiv. Or at least I was hoping it was Swiv, but it didn't load. But it does. The machine does load from tape. It just it, well, it wasn't playing ball for me. 
Another UK game, MSX1 game, Chiller. Yeah, it's fine, just runs faster, that's all. Chucky Egg, another UK cassette-based favourite. And I think this is running at the same speed as on PAL. Let's try this on my other hit bit. It looks exactly the same speed, so perhaps Chucky Egg accounts for what system you're running it on. There are many, many MSX2 games of which I've covered before on the channel, but here's an interesting one. It's a remake of Alien 8, the Spectrum Ultimate Classic. And look how nice it looks. It looks like an ST game, but just slightly lower resolution. There's lots and lots of interesting MSX2 games. Again, I've covered all this stuff on the channel before, but I just wanted to show you this machine running. So the Panasonic FS-A1. Would I import one from Japan? Uh, no, because it's going to cost you a, a small fortune, and there are other MSX machines that are more interesting and, and look nicer. The bright red hip bits, for example, just look gorgeous if you're going to do this. But if you stumble across one of these in your country, then grab it, because it's a really nice machine. The build quality is great. The orange on the keys. Um, is it as useful as a Sony HitBit MSX2 like I have as my main machine here on Genevision? No, because that's got 128K RAM, for example. This has 64. Um, but, I mean, just again, just look at it. If you are into machine aesthetics, um, if you want to own something a little bit unusual that your friends go, oh, that's, that's interesting with the Japanese characters on the keys. Um, if you want to well, the, the thing is as well, I should point out that if you have a flash cart like I do, um, you can force your 50 hertz MSX into 60 hertz anyway. So, um, you know, if you want to play 60 hertz games on your 50 hertz MSX, that's not a problem necessarily. But if you don't have a flash cart and you want to play games at 60 hertz, then yeah, this, this will do it. Um, I think it's an interesting curio to have. I'm really, really pleased I've got it. I just look at it and go, wow, it's a... Japanese MSX2 and it looks gorgeous um, but it is an acquired taste thing you may not think it's worth the money uh, certainly importing it from Japan but as I say if you come across one of these and yeah I mean I, I couldn't resist this wasn't something I bought for the channel um, with channel funds this was something I bought with my birthday money for myself because you d these don't come up often in the UK and it was just like yeah that's that's something for me that's something for my collection that's something i i want to have and you may feel the same way it's at the end of the day yeah it is just another msx it's an msx2 there's other machines around but i mean just look at it look at it it's just a thing of beauty